Assateague Ponies, Hotel Hooligans. The Grands Terrace Hotel in Ocean City, Maryland is located about a mile north of the southernmost end of Fenwick Island. Room prices are reasonable, especially in the off-season. Granted, not all of the amenities are available. The scenic terrace at the sixth floor restaurant is closed. The beach isn't officially closed, but it's difficult to get to, mostly because the city hasn't gotten around to digging out the beach access points yet. And it's also frequently foggy in the spring, which comes as more of a surprise than it should have. As they should in a proper coastal hotel, all of the rooms face the ocean. All the rooms have big sliding doors and a private balcony where one could sit and overlook the ocean, reveling in the sea breeze and salty air. There's even a sticker on the window listing bottlenose dolphin facts, implying that one could dolphin spot off of the balcony. Given the current thickness of the fog, you can barely see the ocean. Maybe the first hundred feet of surfline? Certainly not far enough out for dolphins. But still, the sticker is a nice gesture. If the weather clears and there are actually dolphins out there, you might get a look at them. You slide the door open and step out onto the balcony. The salt air is bracing, refreshing. The perfect thing to take the edge off after hours of driving. If it clears up later, you might get a chance to see stars spread out over the night sky. Or ships out there in the ocean if not. Well, so be it. You weren't in town to be a tourist anyway. You had a conference to attend to, and most of your time should be spent with that. The ocean view, if it ever appears, is just an extra blessing. You check the time on your phone. The hotel has a cheap digital clock on the nightstand, but you don't trust its accuracy. You've been in plenty of hotels where it's wrong. It's probably not a priority of housekeeping to ensure that the clocks are accurate. There's a telephone and a small local guide. Things to do in Ocean City and the surrounding area. Lots of restaurants and local tourist traps, bike rentals for the boardwalk, a ferris wheel and fishing pier at the south end of town, wild ponies, saltwater taffy... But right now, it's time for a shower. Time to wash the road dust off. You leave the balcony door open, because why not? You're on the 11th floor, nobody's gonna steal your stuff. The bathroom fixtures are dated, but clean and functional. The hotel provides plenty of linens and decent soap. Standing on the balcony is like standing on a ship's bridge wing. You've never done that, but you can imagine this is what it's like. Looking down at the ocean below, the open sky above, nothing in the distance but more ocean. Well, right now it's more of a foggy day where you probably couldn't even see the bow of the ship. You can only imagine what the view must be on a sunny day or a clear night, what it must be at sunrise. You're not normally an early riser, but it might be worth it to start the day sipping coffee on the balcony, watching the sun rise over the ocean. Out of the corner of your eye, you catch movement. A pair of seagulls in flight, searching over the boardwalk for food. When tourist season is in full swing, they'll have no lack of opportunity. Right now, there doesn't seem to be much for them. What do seagulls eat when they're not being fed by tourists or raiding garbage cans? There's an almost post-apocalyptic vibe to the boardwalk and beach. Both are empty, although the beach is covered in tire tracks from the beach maintenance crew. Off in the distance, almost lost in the fog, you can see headlights, floodlights, and a rotating beacon on some beach maintenance machine. Getting the beach ready for Memorial Day, no doubt digging the drifted sand off of the seawall gates. The hotel's room is still humid, the exhaust fan in the bathroom doesn't work, and the foggy outside air doesn't help dissipate the lingering steam. Leaving the balcony window open while you go downstairs to check in should be fine. After dinner, the sky still hasn't cleared. It might even be foggier, you can't tell. It's dark, and the ground is lost in the mist. You can see a dozen or so street lamps in either direction along the boardwalk, and that's it. By your rough count, that's about a block in either direction. The weather is cooled down, but it's not unpleasant. How much temperature difference is there in sunlit fog versus moonlit fog? You don't have to be up first thing in the morning, so instead of relying on an alarm clock, you leave the curtains open. The sun will wake you. And you also leave the balcony window open to let some sea air in. In ye old times, it was supposed to cure ailments, and you're not opposed to seeing if it actually does. You set up a backup alarm just in case. To your surprise, your plan actually works, and you're not up long after sunrise. How not long? You don't know, but the hotel clock says, and your cell phone confirms, that it is 6.33 in the AM. The fog is not thinned in the least, but it doesn't matter. You start the coffee maker and enjoy your first cup of coffee while sitting on the balcony, looking out over the ocean. Today will be a busy day, but right now, it doesn't matter. Right now everything is right with the world. The sea breeze is still bracing, shorebirds are keening off in the distance, the beach maintenance crew has gotten off to an early start, backhoes and wheel loaders are at your section of the beach, and are shoveling out the drifted sand. No need for a morning shower, you took one last night. 
You've got a couple of hours to kill before it's time to go downstairs and mingle. And what better way to spend them than sitting out on the balcony watching the ocean? Watching the seabirds dance in the breeze, one of them flying close enough to the balcony to touch. Listening to the crash of the waves as they break on the bar and then roll on the shore. By the time 8pm rolls around, you're physically and emotionally drained. The day had been fun, you had plenty of good conversations, an okay lunch, and an excellent dinner. Now, you're looking forward to slipping on something more comfortable and sitting on the balcony, looking out over the ocean once again. Even though with the fog, it looks like you still won't see much of it. Before you can get to your room, there's the obligatory waiting for an elevator small talk, followed by the new elevator friends chat. You're the last one out, everyone else is rooming on a lower floor. They should have gotten to the hotel sooner and gotten a better room. <laughs> Suckers. Your room is near the elevator bank. You only have to walk a few yards, use your keycard, and then... A lock clicks, you turn the door handle and push open the door to a scene of utter chaos. The refrigerator door is flung wide and all the snacks that you'd set out on the counter are gone. Towels and some of your clothes are strewn about on the floor. For just an instant, you wonder if you're in the wrong room or if the hotel maid grossly misunderstood her job. And then you see the real culprits, the hotel hooligans. A rainbow of pegasi occupying your hotel room, watching your TV, and one of them is even drinking your Mountain Dew. There are five mares on the two queen beds. Two of them are printing each other's wings, two are watching TV, and one of them has her muzzle buried in a bag of Doritos. Your Doritos. As the hotel door swings shut, they all jerk their heads up. Miss Doritos has her snout dusted in neon orange nacho flavor. The six pony is a stallion, and he's nesting on your open suitcase, which is bad enough, and he's also got your nearly empty two-liter nested in the crook of his forelock. In a flurry of fur and feathers, the mares make their escape through the open balcony slider. The stallion doesn't hurry off, he just looks you directly in the eye, drains the bottle, and then takes his leave as well. You rush to the balcony and catch sight of them as they glide out over the ocean, and then the six of them are lost in the mist. Calling the front desk to report this atrocity isn't good enough. You need to go down there and let your feelings be known in person. But just as you rest your hand on the door handle, you really notice the informational signs. The evacuation plan, checkout time, and a sign informing you that seabirds and pegasi alike may fly in if the balcony slider is left open, for which the hotel takes no responsibility. Now let's make this an extreme thing. Now what if that same thing happened to you, but they had guns? Or maybe not guns, they were just fucking each other. Okay, never mind. Let's get on to our amazing donators. Top donators are 630, J10 Man, Darkseid, Only One Thing, and Saru Orion. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Roland, Stu Hex, Sir Brethren Morjid, Omicron Lyrae, Will Chris, Twinkie, Hadzaza, Riot Soul, Iron Sky, Badass Waffle, Shadow Moon, Luigi88, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.